Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from the Frontier. Thank you as always for stopping by. Let me start with some macro thoughts. Venezuela's inflation will skyrocket to get this 1 million percent by the end of the year. This is the IMF's Alejandro Werner, head of the IMF's Western Hemisphere Department. He forecasts the economy to shrink 18 percent in 2018, the third consecutive year of a double-digit contraction. The collapse in economic activity, hyperinflation, increasing deterioration in the provision of public goods, as well as the shortages of food, at subsidized prices have resulted in large migration flows, which lead to intensifying spillover effects on neighboring countries, he wrote. I've written about it several times. Last year in May, I said uh, Venezuela is at breaking point. It is it's dumbfounded me that it's lasted so long, actually, without uh, imploding. And that took me back to Hunter S. Thompson, the H. There is no honest way to explain it, because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. Global bond market sold off with the US 10 year yield jumping to 296% following speculation around the Bank of Japan policy shift. Um, Japanese investors, it's worried, will, might repatriate part of their money if JGB yields start to rise. That took me back to September 2016, mirrors on the ceiling, the pink champagne on ice. Um, and I said, uh, you know, last thing I remember, I was running for the door. I had to find the passage back to the place I was before. The Chinese currency has fallen to a fresh one-year low against the dollar. This is from David Inglis. This was interesting from Red Cap Man. It takes 26 years to find out about the FX swaps used to disguise how low foreign exchange reserves were in the UK in 1992. Bitcoin climbed above $8,000 for the first time uh, since May. It's just a fraction above that level as we speak. Quite a turnaround. Seasonality at play as well. Home thoughts. I love this from Kenneth Norland via the Saatchi Gallery. The colors. Very therapeutic. Now, art thou the man to pitch a harpoon down a live whale's throat and then jump after it? I don't think I am. That's from Moby Dick. Humans are the ubiquitous, terrifying force on the planet. Click on that link. It's about how animals have become more nocturnal to avoid us. It's quite sad. An old photo of the Nairobi Dam from K Researcher. Um, I remember yachts being on that water many years ago. I like this photograph from the US Embassy Seoul, confirming the hottest day of the year in South Korea. I like this Mark, Mark Rothko, 1962, untitled rust, blacks on plum, his unending impact on the daring coloration, flatness, and emotion of abstraction. Indeed. Political reflections, time check, 6.53 p.m. President Kagame bids farewell to Chinese President Xi Jinping after his two-day visit. Um, and uh, President Kagame was a wonderful guest on Mindspeak. Uh, uh, yeah is really an extraordinary fellow and he really navigates the world stage with some finesse and sophistication. Um, and then uh, time check 743 uh, welcomes Prime Minister Narendra Modi who's seen here presenting him with flowers but apparently is also giving him 200 cows. Both world leaders are, are visiting uh, Kigali for the first time. This has been the culmination of 22 years of struggle. I can honestly say I've given my best for Pakistan. Now I leave the rest to Allah, says Imran Khan. I met Imran Khan many years ago uh, in, in the apartment of a couple called Raj and Mala. And I fully expect him actually to lead Pakistan 
the way he played his cricket, which was with passion, panache, and chutzpah. This is Pakistan's real and nominal exchange rate, which is something he's going to have to deal with. This is from Sun Chartist. American talk of a rules-based order notably strikes China as the purest hypocrisy of fig leaf covering a superpower's lust for dominance. The economist T.S. Eliot, quoted by Michiko Kakutani, distracted from distraction by distraction in this twittering world. This is referencing a highly efficient White House communication strategy summed up by Trump Sarah attacks as Glenn Thrush. Everybody is now talking about security clearances, which displaces other stories from front pages, top of newscasts, which have finite time and space. New indignation supplants old, which makes Putin old news. Iran will close the Strait of Hormuz if its oil shipments are threatened, said the Iranian armed forces. That follows up um, the comment by Hassan Rouhani, we have been the guarantor of the regional's waterways security throughout history. Color us Unimpressed, the world heard even harsher bluster a few months ago, and Iranians have heard them, albeit more civilized ones, for 40 years. This is Javed Zarif. We've been around for millennia, he says, and seen the fall of empires, including our own, which lasted more than the life of some countries. Be cautious. Vladimir Putin's revenge, says the Financial Times, for Putin last week's summit in Helsinki with Donald Trump was a moment of deep satisfaction. Mr. Trump's hesitation when asked to condemn Russian interference in the 2016 election, or even to recognize Moscow's responsibility, echoed the standard Putinist response to the charge of attempting to subvert American democracy. As Gideon Rachman argues in his column this week, Mr. Putin maintains that the U.S. has long attempted to undermine Russia's political system. Indeed, it did. Let's be honest about it. And because the West lies too, Moscow's deceptions are a legitimate defense mechanism. And then I got into an engagement with Leon Lidugu, who's based in India, uh, but is Kenyan. And, uh, well, let me start with my first response. I think that's exactly the right word for the Helsinki summit, the revenge of Vladimir. Um, it, when I watched the footage, it reminded me of a predator. I like going to the game park. I, it reminded me of a predator. He has his prey. Every instinct is to snuff it out completely. He can hardly stop himself, but he has to, because it is a decapitation strike and monstrously successful at that. We then were debating about propaganda, and I said, yes, it's very curious. Um, sorry, I was saying that how deep Russia has penetrated into opposition territory, um, and then saying that they are very sophisticated in this sort of what, hybrid warfare, an information warfare, considerably ahead of the curve. And I think this is what's dumbfounded folks, the leapfrog that Vladimir has effected. Um, and then he was asking about the propaganda side, and I said, you know, for a long time, uh, the way propaganda worked was quite simple. Um, uh, the discourse was of the other, you know, Saddam, Gaddafi, Mad Dog. Um, and by being the other, you were immediately discounted to zero. But I think the information architecture, which allowed complete console control, you know, uh, has been disrupted by the internet and the new Tower of Babel. Everyone's got a voice now. They can be heard. And uh, I think this is the dramatic change, which I don't think Western powers have totally fully comprehended or onboarded. President Isaiah Afawaki and King Salman met uh, at the Royal Palace in Jeddah. Look at this from Vala Afshar, information created worldwide, zettabytes, 0 0.1 in 2005, 163 predicted in 2024. I called it the arrival of the information century. Let's move on to international markets. It costs $5.96 
to insure $100 of Tesla's debt, plus an upfront cost of around 18%, representing a total of 24.1% of the face value of the 2025 bond. That was on Monday. The CDS is saying that there are a lot of people betting this company is going out of business. That spread it is, yeah, that's what they're betting on. And it took me back to what I thought at the time was an incredibly inappropriate tweet, which was on April Fool's Day when Elon Musk tweeted, Tesla goes bankrupt. And the link is there on Rich Wrap-Ups if you want to read what he said. Overnight, Asian stocks climb, the one tumble, Trump takes aim at Amazon, earnings seasons continues, oil is $67.71, and 10-year Treasury yields just below 3%. The US dollar has appreciated against currencies of almost all major US trading partners so far in 2018, not just China and the EU. The Kenya shilling has bucked that trend, interestingly. Come on, let's go on to the currency markets, Euro dollar 116.96, having been down at 116.61 earlier in the morning. Dollar index, that was from earlier, 94.78, that's probably come off. Japanese yen has strengthened 111.13. Swiss franc 0.9950, the pound was below 131, we're back above it, 131.18. Um, the Australian dollar is at 0 0.7390. India rupee 68.965, South Korean won 11.3660, the real 378.23, Egyptian pound 17.9045, and the rand at the 13.50 mark, which seems to me about fair value. Talk of the Bank of Japan changing policy and the US Treasury's sell off have raised Japanese yields across the curve quite substantially last few days. Kept in context though, the government can still borrow at 1% for up to 40 years. Dollar index, we're still in this 94 to 96 zone. We've had a three-time rejection at about 95.85 if I remember correctly. Got to keep an eye on that. Bitcoin has now spent a full week above its 50-day moving average according to Bitstamp pricing. That's bullish. Fangs up on Google's earnings beat. Google parent company Alphabet reported Q2 sales of $26.24 billion versus $25.5 billion expected. Gold, let's take a look at what that's doing. That's at 12.26, little bit of a bounce since the morning. Crude oil, $68.06. That's balanced from being negative earlier on when I checked in. Probably on some comments, no doubt, from Trump. Look at this, Mumbai, the most dev devastating picture I've ever come across, Seraph 737. The back's view of plastic. China's Belt and Road Initiative is boosting its ties with Africa, says Bloomberg, Senegal's decision to become the first African country. On the Atlantic coast, to sign up to the Belt and Road Initiative shows how quickly the transport network project connecting China by land and sea to Asia, the Middle East, Europe and Africa is expanding. Lending by China to Africa rose to about $12 billion in 2015 from little more than $100 million in 2000. Bloomberg Economics expects China to make significant policy declarations on its lending to Africa and other economic initiatives at the next forum on China-Africa cooperation in Beijing in September. But have a look at this. This is the chairman of the BRICS Business Council, South African chapter, Dr. Iqbal Survey, no less. If you know the survey story, it's extraordinary. We need him to go faster. We need his promises to turn into action now. This is Abidir talking about Prime Minister Abiy. There may be a gap in that the people's expectations are huge. You can say that again. It is difficult to deliver on all of the changes they expect. Impossible. Um, but as I said, Prime Minister Abiy has moved with virilian speed. He's really, I think, the most consequential arrival of any politician since 1990, because it wasn't 1994 that Nelson Mandela came out of prison, but 1990. And I apologize for that, as the past becomes a blur. Senior official in Kabila's party says he has the right to stand in December. This is the scenario many fear. 
Um, and basically, Kabila will claim the Constitutional Court will agree that the constitutional modification in 2011 equates to a new constitution. In an exclusive interview, uh, Moishi Katumbi has asked Cyril Ramaphosa to save the people of Congo from the dungeons of hell. Kabila doesn't want me to return home so I can fill in my nomination form to be an official presidential candidate. The situation in my country is escalating. Opposition leaders and supporters are jailed on trumped-up charges. And I believe President Ramaphosa can be our saviour, he said. Katumbi said he was coming to South Africa in a few weeks' time to plead with President Ramaphosa to come to the rescue of the people of Congo. I would beg him to save the people of Congo from the dungeons of hell. Well, let's see how that develops, because on the 6th of June, I said Kabila outwitted Moishi Katumbi by removing him from the street. I was referencing Paul Virilia's quotation about the street and the Congo entirely. This might well prove a cleverly administered technical knockout, and today it looks exactly like that. Which way will the youth quake break in Zimbabwe? Um, that's a big question. Claims of rigging are casting a cloud over Zimbabwe's first election since Robert Mugabe quit. That's Bloomberg. Zimbabwe's military is on high alert ahead of the election. Government put its security forces on high alert before the July 30 presidential election, as some opposition parties threaten to protest against voting irregularities and incorrect printing of ballot papers. Opposition parties are taking on President Emerson Mnangagwa in the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front, which has ruled the country for 38 years. The vote will decide who will lead the Southern African nation into a new era following the ouster of Robert Mugabe in November. And in November, I wrote, <coughs> the military which launched this decapitation of Mugabe are certainly set to shape the outcome of this election about which we're about to face. But I said then, they now have a tiger by the tail. And what do I mean by that? The, the competition is very close, 37% to 40%. You look around the continent, it's a youthful population. If they embrace change, they're putting Nelson over the top. I think they're going to do exactly that. It's going to be a little bit like Corbyn, a youth quake. And therefore, I think the genie's out of the bottle. Interesting report in all Africa. Zanu PF also imported hundreds of new vehicles for the campaign from a reported $200 million war chest, currently inexplicable. Emirates rules out investing in struggling South African Airways. South African Airways, uh, all shares down 4.95% year to date. Dollar versus Rand up to around the 1350 level. That looks like equilibrium for now. Nigerian Central Bank asks lenders to bid for Chinese one. Traders mentioning that Nigerian oil shares down 4% year to date. Ghana's Central Bank kept its policy rate at 17%. Ghana's Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 11.01% year to date. Ethiopian busts in the tank graveyard, Asmara, Eritrea. This is from Chris J. Stein. 22nd of January, I wrote, e-commerce and home-based deliveries have changed the world from London to China. I am certain the same disruption is headed our way. I said a lot of commercial real estate will be legacy assets, millennials with their avocado eating ways and cryptocurrency trading ways are just as likely to be African as they are European or American, I said. And I learned from Untad Mukisa Kitu. E-commerce contributed 6% of all purchases in Kenya in 2017. He's saying African countries can do better with about 300 million smartphones. E-commerce has the potential to grow economies and also market local produce, produce. Here in Africa, when ordering online, one has to pick, pay, and then pray. The problem is to, no one pays before the delivery is received. So that's a slight correction on that. Nairobi all shares up 0.72% year-to-date. BAT reported first half earnings per share decline 9.31%. Um, uh, half of gross revenue first half down 10.652%. Operating profit down 4.302%. 
profit before tax down 8.96 percent earnings per share down 9.31 percent interim dividend unchanged at three shillings 50 a share gross revenue reduced by 10 percent driven by lower domestic volumes following excise lead price increases lower cut rag sales offset by higher export sales and contract manufacturing revenues Operating margin improved by 2.7 percentage points to 32.9 percent. The reduction in net cash generated from operating activities is driven by lower revenues and timing of working capital movements. That deteriorated from negative 3.735 billion last year first half to 5.109 billion. Exports contributing a larger share of company revenues, 52% now. Sportsman and Safari contribute 75% of local revenues. Um, so look, the, I think the earnings per share was at the top of the range, but I think people will be concerned about the deterioration in the cash position. Kura asked for more time to complete the Outer Ring Road, which is one of the roads that goes around the Outer Ring in Nairobi. NSE 20 is down 10.59% year to date. My piece over the weekend was about how Safaricom was porting its own PESA platform into Ethiopia. And we also did a small YouTube video of the same. Um, there's a link for Safaricom share price. There is another link for any quoted share price. I've now discovered from the star that our sugar has mercury. 60% of the samples analyzed for the moisture content. Uh, it's not suitable for human consumption. Can you believe it? Kenya's average farmer is 63 years old in a population where children and youth represent 78% of the total population. I went for a wander around some farms and I noticed exactly that. No kids, grandparents. Outrage greets Ben Chumo vetting for SRC job. That's in the Daily Nation. Uh, Chumo was the previous CEO of KPLC, now interdicted, um, but seems to be still able to sit and go through a vetting process. For the salaries and review commission um, and uh, finally a number of interviews one with dr benson wairegi i did a while back one with george odo of african best and finally my last link is of the visit to kakuma that i did a few uh, weeks ago thanks for stopping by